Okay, has this ever happened to you? You see a video pop up of the ocean and you think, wow, these coral reefs are so dull. Is coral bleaching really that bad that everything in the ocean is dead? Today, we're diving into a topic that might be surprising if you've ever watched coral reef videos and felt like something was missing. If you're like me, you remember seeing these vibrant, colorful coral reefs growing up. But if you've seen recent videos or gone diving yourself, maybe you notice the reefs don't look as bright and alive as you thought. Today, we're going to explore why that is, and spoiler alert, it's not just because coral reefs are dying. Now, don't get me wrong, coral reefs around the world are under a lot of stress from climate change, pollution, and other factors. But there's something else going on here that affects how coral reefs look in videos and why you might feel like they looked more beautiful when you were younger. First up, let's talk about what I call the rose-tinted glasses effect. Back in the day, when we were watching those early documentaries, either at school or on TV at home, the footage we saw was usually the best of the best. What we didn't see were the countless hours of less exciting or murky footage. Filmmakers and photographers would cherry-pick only the most vibrant reefs to give us the most breathtaking experience possible. Underwater filmmakers would spend hours hunting down colorful coral or waiting for the perfect lighting. They'd capture only a small section of a reef that looked super bright and healthy, and even though that might have been the exception rather than the rule, it became the version of coral reefs that stuck in our memories. Another key factor, lighting. When you see coral reefs in documentaries, most of the time they're using very bright artificial lights to illuminate the scene. These lights bring out colors you just can't see with your naked eye underwater. You see, water absorbs colors, especially reds and yellows, as you go deeper. As we go deeper, the natural light filters out, leaving mostly blue. This is why a reef that looks grayish or dull to the diver's eye can look totally different with bright lights on it. Those lights bring out vibrant colors, making the coral look almost as if it's glowing. Look at the difference here. On the left, we have reef and natural light. Notice how muted and kind of dull the colors are. But on the right, we're using artificial lights to bring out the hidden colors. Suddenly, it looks a lot more like those documentaries from back in the day. So if you've seen videos of coral reefs today and felt like, wow, that doesn't look like I remember, it's partly because the videos we remembered from our childhood were enhanced to look as beautiful as possible. They use selective editing and lighting techniques that make the reefs seem more alive than what a diver would typically see in person. Now, this doesn't mean coral reefs aren't beautiful in real life. There's so much life and color there, but you have to understand that those vibrant colors we often expect to see aren't as prominent when you're actually underwater without any lights. It's kind of like how social media filters work today. We know a lot of people edit their photos to look more colorful and eye-catching. The same idea applies here. What we remember is like a filtered version of what coral reefs are actually like. And that's okay. Coral reefs are still incredible and full of life, even if they don't always look like those super saturated images. So if you go diving or snorkeling and don't see these intense colors, remember, it's not that the reefs have lost their magic, it's just that what we see naturally underwater is different. So next time you watch a coral reef video or see footage that looks a bit dull, just remember that lighting and selective filming make a huge difference. Our memories of coral reefs are often based on highly edited footage, but the reefs are still out there, alive and thriving in their own way. Just in case you're wondering, why are coral reefs so important in the first place? Coral reefs are often called the rainforests of the sea because they're some of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. They support around 25% of all marine life, even though they cover less than 1% of the ocean floor. They provide food, shelter, and breeding grounds for countless species, including fish that millions of people rely on for food. Coral reefs also protect the coastline from storms and erosion, acting like natural barriers that reduce the force of waves. Plus, they're a huge resource for medical research. Scientists are discovering compounds in coral that could help treat diseases like cancer. Coral reefs play an indirect but vital role in producing the oxygen that we breathe. Although coral itself doesn't produce oxygen, coral reefs are home to a huge diversity of photosynthetic organisms, especially phytoplankton and algae that do. Here's how it works. Corals have a unique relationship with tiny algae called zooxanthellae, which live within their tissue. Through photosynthesis, these algae produce oxygen as a byproduct, providing energy to the coral and helping sustain the reef ecosystem. Coral reefs provide a thriving habitat for phytoplankton, microscopic plants that drift through ocean waters. Phytoplankton are responsible for producing a significant portion of the world's oxygen, around 50 to 80 percent, 
thanks to the photosynthesis they perform. The diverse and rich environment of a coral reef supports a healthy phytoplankton population indirectly contributing to global oxygen production. While coral reefs themselves aren't major oxygen producers, they support the marine life that keeps our oceans and, by extension, our atmosphere full of oxygen. Healthy oceans, which include thriving coral reefs, are essential for maintaining the planet's oxygen cycle. So when we protect coral reefs, we're not just saving these beautiful underwater gardens, we're supporting marine life, local communities, and potentially our own health. One more thing that I wanted to add is that all the videos that we've seen before were shot with big professional cameras. Even a lot of the footage that I featured to make this video was shot on a RED or an expensive Sony camera. And me personally, I mostly just use my GoPro. I love the GoPro because it keeps me in the moment, so I don't have to worry so much about all this crazy stuff with a expensive camera that has all these settings and different things to do with it. With the GoPro, I'm just in the moment, it's either on or off, and I just keep it attached to my head. That way, whatever I see, it sees. Unfortunately, having such a small form factor like the GoPro makes it a little bit limited on capabilities. Of course, it's still a great camera and being in the moment is probably one of the most important things about having a GoPro. But at the end of the day, when you go to edit those colors, it's just a little bit more difficult to get the colors to pop compared to using a professional cinema camera. Of course, the cinema cameras can cost up to $100,000, not even including the water housings for them. And then the lenses can be really expensive. Meanwhile, GoPro GoPro is like $350. And honestly, some of the times when I compare my GoPro footage to my DSLR footage, I'm like, wow, why did I spend $10,000 on this DSLR with a water housing and all these lenses? And it almost looks exactly the same when I put it on the phone. So that's just one more thing to keep in mind is that not everyone out there is shooting with a $100,000 camera to get the most epic colors when they go dive. Before we wrap up, it's important to remember that while lighting and editing do change how reefs look on camera, many coral reefs are under serious threat from issues like climate change, pollution, and overfishing. Coral bleaching, where the reefs lose their vibrant colors due to stress, is becoming more common around the world. So even though lighting and selective filming might make reefs look different than what we see in person, there's still a real risk of losing their beauty and the vital role that they play in marine ecosystems. There are things we can do to help protect coral reefs, like reducing plastic waste, being mindful of what we leave behind when we visit reefs, and supporting conservation efforts. Small actions like choosing reef-safe sunscreen or minimizing our carbon footprint can make a difference. Let's do our part to keep these incredible reefs alive for future generations to explore and enjoy. If you guys enjoyed this video essay about coral reefs, make sure you smash the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Let's keep exploring and appreciating these incredible ecosystems in their natural state. Okay, that's all the stuff we saw. Bye.